Now this is just a sample of sort of a phenomenon that happens. This is me with my lightsaber. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and objects just appear that will then signal to us. And they're quite large, actually. Um, and they will do it over and over again over the course of a night. So we, we call these cosmic light bulbs, where they're flash bulbs, where they just sort of appear and light up, sometimes bright enough to light up the whole ground around where we're in our circle. And then they dematerialize again. But they're still there. I always tell people that happens, but they're still present in a trans-dimensional way just beyond the crossing point of the speed of light. Stranger still are the ones that appear in the trees or near us in the circle, like these. Boom. Now, that's, these are not artifacts. And so this is a night vision monocular, so you can't see the color. Frequently, these will be beautiful um, ruby red or cobalt blue um, objects. And uh, in fact, Emily and I were there when this one happened, right in the tree. Lights up the side of the tree and another one looks like a lo localized piece of lightning in front of the tree, but it isn't. So this is what you need to be aware of. Now, what's behind that light? We'll talk about that. Because if you were to go into the dimension that this is emerging from, it might be a massive ET craft that's 1,000 feet across. But all you're picking up in this dimension is its emergence into this dimension. This, you can see it actually rotate up. And then we have these objects. This looks like it's a satellite. Um, it isn't. We go out with um, satellite charts, and this was at a time of night there were no satellites visible, and it gets very big and then moves over. Sometimes they'll stop and turn, change directions. So these may be very high up in the sky, and then there'll be phenomena that's happening all around us like those other objects. And the, the main thing to, to understand is that if they're doing something like this, what they're really wanting you to do, it's like an invitation, come. Well, how are you going to come? We don't have an anti-gravity vehicle to go there. You go into consciousness and float up to them. You go to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's another one. Often this spacecraft that I call the, the one that kindness is on, I call her that. She's an ET with a perfectly round head, like a round, um, and no hair and no ear, outer ears that I met um, in Sherry's apartment the night that Sherry passed away. And Sherry introduced me to her in the worlds of light and dream time. And every single time we've gone out since then, this ship has appeared. And it's classically blue to blue-white, diamond-white um, object into the, the ocean. Oh, oh, oh my oh, god. god. That was great. Oh. Okay, watch again. We're at our site at Mount Shasta. An object in front of us lifts up right here. Yeah, it's a light ship, trans-dimensional. The camera guy was amazing that he could track it. He was following my laser. You'll see my laser come in. Here it is. And it, goes, it dematerializes. But it's almost like inchworming halfway in this dimension. But prior to that, we'd been having a contact experience in our meditation from the beings on this ship. So this is lifting up right in front of the mountain at Mount Shasta. I do recommend you go there if you have the opportunity to practice. So Outer Banks is OBX. We're on the beach at National Seashore, and there's a highway. You'll see some headlights here. Hear the detector? OK, so that starts happening, which we know is a signal they're about to arrive. And there's a ship that appears and dematerializes, rematerializes, and watch. Boom. Beep, beep. It was huge. It lit up the ocean. It was orange, golden light, massive, and then it's gone. This is not a satellite. 
watch, and now here's, yeah. The people have asked me, how many of these have you seen? I said, several thousand. Not, not, this, this is not a rare occurrence, but this is beautiful. And we were able to photograph this. Watch, nothing there. So it came into this dimension, the signaling with the electronics, it lit up the ocean. Now watch this one, this is awesome. It keeps happening. And now watch what's gonna happen, the next one. Look at the angle it turns. <laughs> no, and then it, 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 then it signals to us in dematerial. Do you see the angle? All right, these are not satellites or aircraft. But then what's on the beach with us making all the turns? And then, you know, is it, it when they're dematerialized but they're moving around us and we'll be in meditation and they'll touch us on our right shoulder or top of our head. Amazing kinds of contact happen that are very unusual and not what people think. And when we were in Florida a few years ago, these are just samples of the things that happen on every trip. There was this being, and this is sand. It looks like a halo. This is a sort of trans-dimensional energy field. Two eyes here, a head, sort of a torso, very kind of abstract. But it was a light being that appeared, and we were on the beach, and I saw this shimmering, and I asked the camera person, because I'm, I'm ten thumbs with a camera. You don't want to give me a camera. I'm pathetic. Give me a chest tube or a defibrillator, but not a camera. That's <laughs> terrible, but true. Uh, but So this is what appeared right there in front of us on the sand. This is the sand. These are not photoshopped. This is what they actually look like. Beautiful. Next. And I want to mention this, because in the early days, we went to England every year with Colin Andrews. God bless him. And we went into these contact mode, and our logo of C SETI are three circles connected by a line. And this shape was being visualized by us and sent up to the ETs, and we asked them to make this form. Well, of course, if you put it in three dimensions, it's a tetrahedron. If you put it into two of them together, half merge, you get a Merkaba, which is part of the very advanced technique I teach and have been teaching for a long time. Yeah. So this is really cool. At my, I have some land in Colorado, and this shot up right in front of our group from the land. You can see the trail of it. Zzz, boom, light ship. You see it? This is unbelievable. This is, <laughs> we're standing there doing our contact protocols with our hands outstretched, welcoming them, and this appears in thin air a point, then this, and a light going up. Not an artifact. So it comes into this dimension. Everyone sees this, by the way. Beautiful. From another dimension and another star system. And when they vanish, they're inviting you to go into their dimension in consciousness and thought. If that makes sense.
that you are becoming that manifests through your physical body is the inner weightlessness where time seems to go by faster where you breathe deeper lights up the side of the tree and another one looks like a lo localized piece of lightning in front of the tree but it isn't so this is what you need to be aware of now what's behind that light we'll talk about that because if you were to go into the dimension that this is emerging from it might be a massive ET craft that's a thousand feet across but all you're picking up in this dimension is its emergence into this dimension This, you can see it actually rotate up. Now this is just a sample of sort of a phenomenon that happens. This is me with my lightsaber. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and objects just appear that will then signal to us and they're quite large, actually. Um, and they will do it over and over again over the course of a night. So we, we call these cosmic light bulbs, where they're flash bulbs, where they just sort of appear and light up, sometimes bright enough to light up the whole ground around where we're going to come. We don't have an anti-gravity vehicle to go there. You go into consciousness and float up to them. You go to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... Here's another one. Often this spacecraft that I call the, the one that kindness is on, I call her that. She's an ET with a perfectly round head, like a round, um, and no hair and no ear, outer ears that I met um, in Sherry's apartment the night that Sherry passed away. And Sherry introduced me to her in the worlds of life. And then we have these objects. This looks like it's a satellite. Um, it isn't. We go out with um, satellite charts, and this was at a time of night there were no satellites visible, and it gets very big and then moves over. Sometimes they'll stop and turn, change directions. So these may be very high up in the sky, and then there'll be phenomena that's happening all around us like those other objects. And the, the main thing to, to understand is that if they're doing something like this, what they're really wanting you to do, it's like an invitation, come, well, how you, in our circle, and then they dematerialize again. But they're still there. I always tell people that happens, but they're still present in a trans-dimensional way just beyond the crossing point of the speed of light. Stranger still are the ones that appear in the trees or near us in the circle, like these, boom. Now, that's, these are not artifacts. And so this is a night vision monocular, so you can't see the color. Frequently, these will be beautiful um, ruby red or cobalt blue um, objects. And uh, in fact, Emily and I were there when this one happened, right in the tree. 